What's going on guys, Tosker here, and in this video we're actually going to create a little edit page here so when we click the edit button uh, we can change all of the labels here that we have our details in to text boxes so we can then modify them and then click save to update. So that being said, we want to go down here to our XAML. We then want to create a text box. We want to get the text property and we want to bind it to the selected contact dot name. We want to give it a fallback value of null and set its mode to two way. And then of course we want to add some design properties to it. Feel free to pause and copy that. We then now want to scroll up here uh, to our actual view and we see that we have a little text box here. It's right above the name. Now if we run the application we're going to see the text box and the label there and we don't really want that because the text box should only be there if we decide we want to edit the contact. So that being said we want to go over here to our solution explorer and then we want to create a new folder. and we want to name it helpers and then we want to add a new class and then we want to name this class converters now I'm going to add these converters and skip the video uh, if you're unfamiliar with using uh, converters at all I do have a video specifically on using converters in a similar way that we're using it here. So you can check the description below and check out that video, um, but I also will briefly explain our converters once I cut the video. Okay, so here we have our two converters. We have one, as I mentioned, the bool to visibility and then the null to visibility. Now the bool to visibility, all we're doing is we're going to bind an object to it, pass it, if it's true then we are going to return a visible and if not it'll be collapsed and then conversely we're going to do the same here for the null to visibility converter and I'll just zoom in here real quick for those of you that want a little better look however now that we created our converters we want to go over to our app.xaml and we want to add our converters in here so we can later access them as a static resource we want to first create a namespace, so xmlns, uh, we'll call this helper, equals clr namespace, and we want to find our helpers folder. Then right below our bitmap image we created, we want to access the helper, and then our bool to visibility converter. We'll give this an x key of is edit converter. and then apply the same for our null to visibility converter. Now if you do have an error here, we just want to go up and rebuild the project. Now lastly, we want to go over here to our contacts view model and we want to actually implement some properties so we can determine if we are in edit mode or display mode. So the first thing we're going to do is create a little uh, boolean property. And then next we want to create a public bool called is display mode. And we're simply just going to get and return the opposite of our is edit mode. Now of course since we are not really having a set property for here we do want this to also update. So in our is edit mode we'll do an on property changed and whenever this changes we will also update the display mode property. Next we want to scroll down here a bit and we want to create a i command. We're going to call this the edit command get private set. And then down here we want to actually implement that. So our relay command will then have an edit method we'll call and then it's uh, can execute will be determined by a boolean method we create. So control period to add the edit method and then control period to add the can edit bool method. We're simply going to check if there is a selected contact so 
if it equals null, then we obviously want to return false because we can't edit something we don't have selected. But if that's not the case, then we want to return the opposite of the is edit mode. And then down here for our edit method, which will be pretty simple, we just want to change the is edit mode to true. So that being done, we want to go over here and go back to our details view and go down to our XAML. And where we have our text box here, we want to access the visibility property. We want to set up the binding for the is edit mode. And then we want to attach our converter here to the static resource we created earlier of the is edit converter. However, we also want to hide our label when we show our text box. So we're going to add a visibility converter for the label as well, binding. And for this one, for the labels, we will use the is display mode. So we get the opposite of edit. And then we also attach that to our converter that we created. Then next, we want to actually scroll down. We'll see our browse button that we created. And we also want to add a visibility converter to this. Uh, we don't want to be able to add a new image if we're not editing the contact. And lastly, if we scroll up here, uh, we see what we did for the text box. So the text box is binded to the is edit mode and the label is binded to the is display mode. So now we want to scroll down here to, let's say, our phone details and all of our other details. And for all the labels, we're going to bind to the is display mode. And for all the text boxes that we're going to create uh, right above them, we're going to bind it to the is edit mode. Okay, so now we finished adding, for example, in all of our labels, we set up the visibility for is display as mentioned, and then right below them a text box where its visibility depends on the is edit mode. So up here in our designer, it should look something like this where we have our home, so the label, uh, the label that will be shown when not in edit mode, aka display mode, and then the text box which will be shown when in edit mode. So now we actually want to go over here to our solution explorer and go to our main window. And then right here in the designer we want it so when we click this edit button we can turn on edit mode. So then going down to our XAML here, going to find our edit button, which is right here. And then we want to set up a command here. So we're going to do a command binding. And if you remember, we're going to access our book view model. So the main book, our contacts view model, which holds the list and our selected contact, which also contains here our edit command. And here's our application. We still have this view here that we don't really want, but uh, as we click our contacts, and we can see everything's working like it was before. But now, uh, if we select Jane Doe and then we click the edit button, we should see all of our labels disappear and then our text box show. Another thing we're going to want to fix is when we had that null view. We don't want anything to be displayed uh, if nothing is actually there. So we want to go over here to our Solution Explorer and we want to go to our Details view and go down here to the XAML. We want to find the actual grid that we're in here, which is right up at the top. And here we want to set up a uh, converter. So we're going to get the visibility of this grid binding. We're going to get the selected contact. And then if you remember, we made another converter, static resource, which is the selected contact converter. Now what this does is this checks to see if uh, the selected contact is null then we're going to hide, uh, set the visibility to collapsed. And if we do have a selected contact, then we're going to have the visibility set to uh, visible. So now that we have ran our application, we see that uh, when we don't have anything selected, this is actually um, an empty view. We also might want to take note that our edit button is disabled, so our uh, can execute is working properly. And now when we click contacts, and as we select a contact, we see that it actually appears. And if we go over here to favorite, uh, which we haven't really set up yet, but if we select it, we'll see our selected will now be null, and it'll actually hide uh, the display view we made over here. So we have everything pretty much set up for actually uh, modifying our view a bit. 
but we do want to set it up so when we hit save that we can get out of edit mode and then save our new details. So we're going to go over here to our context view model and then we're going to want to set up a new command here public i command save command git private set and then down here we're going to want to of course implement it So we'll set up a method of save and it's can execute will be determined if it is in is edit mode. All right, so now here in our save, uh, we're gonna write a to do and this is where we're gonna want to save the data service. But then we want to set the is edit mode to false. And because we updated the contact that we have selected, we wanna do an on property changed here of the selected contact and for the is edit what we want to do here is just simply return the is edit mode so going back over here to our details view and going down to our save button we want to set up a command here so we'll do command binding save command so now there's one last thing that we actually want to do and we want to pass a data service to our contacts uh, view model. So over here in our solution explorer we're going to go to our book view model. And we're going to go down here to our contacts VM and we're actually going to pass it the iContact data service. Now of course we're going to have an error because we now need to go over here to our contacts view model and go over to our uh, constructor here and we want to have it accept a I contact data service and import that namespace here. We'll call it service. And then right below our commands here, we're going to create a private I contact data service. We'll call it underscore service. And in the constructor, we're going to then set the service to the parameter we passed it. And then we can go down here to our save where we set our to do comment and we're going to call the service save and we're going to pass it our collection of contacts. 